John Stetton, Pastor Wire. Hello, everybody. We're going to start by talking a little bit about slumps. Every sport has them. Every athlete has them. And uh, every handicapper has them. Uh, thoroughbred racing is no different. Uh, slumps are slumps. And when you're in one, it's very easy to get discouraged. It's very easy to get down. Uh, it's very easy to feel like you're doing everything wrong. And sometimes, in, in essence, you are. If you're not winning, uh, you, you ha you're having a, a, a run of bad luck. You're just not making right moves. And uh, it can snowball and be very, very frustrating. And no matter how good of a money manager and or handicapper you are, when you're in a slump, it's tough. You know, I've been playing a long time, as a lot of you know, so I've had my share of them, and I'll tell you how I deal with them, and I'll use this past weekend as a perfect example. Um, going into Saturday, I liked the horse in the Peter Pan, um, High North. I did a little video about him. He ran no good. He looked loaded for bad down the backside. Florent Giroux looked like he had a ton of horse. When I hit the top of the lane and the real race started, no gas in the tank whatsoever. Uh, I liked the horse earlier on the card in the vagrancy, a Todd Pletcher horse that I knew would be cold on the board and overlooked. And, you know, she was, but uh, she didn't run any good either. So it was, you know, two strikes and I was out on Saturday and it was a discouraging day. And one of the things I found that, you know, since I became involved in Past the Wire and uh, started sharing a lot of my opinions, which for years and years I never did, uh, nobody knew who I liked or why, but, you know, my, my situation's changed. Social media has uh, evolved, and I actually enjoy sharing sharing my opinion now um, with a lot of different people for different reasons. But that said, it stings a lot more when you're wrong and, uh, you know, you've shared your opinion publicly with people and some of them have even followed you. Then when you're on your own and you just go lick your wounds and, you know, crawl into your little hole and come out when it's all over with. But Saturday was one of those days. Bang. Got hit with two left hooks. Was up against the ropes. Never down and out and always ready to go one more round. But it was a tough one. Now, that said, I was in a little bit of a slump and a little bit of a funk. But I've been doing this game long enough to know that it's cyclical. And those tables, the one thing about them that you can count on, they turn. They always do. And if you're good and confident and you know what you're doing, you know that it's only a matter of time until they turn. And if you keep putting yourself in position to capitalize, when they turn, bang, you erase all the sins and all the wounds. And Sunday came, and I looked at the card a little bit discouraged, but I did my homework as diligently as ever. And there were two horses on Tracking Trips. Tracking Trips is a service that many of you know is a trip note service where I try and spot horses that had trouble trips, ran against, or with the bias. And, you know, one of the things I do is when they run back, I put my little comments about how I think they're going to fare in the spot that they ran back, that they're running back, because it's not always the same as the spot where they may have had the trouble. And in addition to that, every once in a while, if I like a pick four or a specific horse, I'll give it out to the membership um, as opposed to doing a video like I did on uh, Vagrancy and, 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 the, and the Vagrancy and the Vagrancy into Peter Pan. But <clears throat> Sunday came and I handicapped the races and I also noticed that there were two tracking trips horses that were running back. One was running back the first time after being on, uh, added to the list, which in my opinion is the best time to catch them. The other one was running back the second time. The first time he had run, he went off 16 to one, ran a hell of a good second. Um, that horse was what everybody wants and he won yesterday at Churchill, bang. Put right on the tracking trip notes that he was a major contender, but we were gonna get nowhere near the 16 to one that we got the first time he ran back, and that's the day we would have really been able to capitalize had he won, but he ran second. A lot of people hit the exacta and all the power to him. I don't really bet that way, so it didn't help me personally all that much, but if it helped some of the members, all the better. Uh, the other horse running back was Punked, who, uh, I'll read my notes. Uh, first time U.S. import broke from the rail and was bottled up in traffic a good part of the way. She 
fell back further than she should have and still wound up inside and in traffic in the lane, likely moves forward off the race and with a clean trip next out. Race rating was three negative and that's a little rating system I use depending on how much trouble that they have. And you know, my comment was major contender live and a must use for me. Uh, so those two horses were running and they were tracking trip horses and you know, they both won. But the key to the day and the key to turning the slump came in the one horse that I saw that I thought was a, a very nice play. And that was a horse by the name of Blessed Halo. She was number 11, uh, sprinting on turf, awful layoff, going first time on the grass. And my comments were, it's going to be bombs away for me in the ninth race at Belmont. I like number 11, Blessed Halo. This one is bred to handle and even improve on turf. He ran second to a nice horse on the dirt while still a maiden in the stake, and he should be ready to come out blasting off the layoff first time turf. He is 30 to 1 on the morning line and likely gets totally overlooked here. Well, when I bet with about a minute or so to post, he was 16 to 1, wound up 14 to 1, went right to the lead, never looked back, wire to wire. Uh, Larry Comer said, let every step of the way. And you can rest assured that whatever slump I may have been in, had it been for more than a couple of days, even a couple of months, we, we, we negated all of that, which it hadn't been that long, but we negated all of that with that one play. And the thing to remember about slumps is don't let them take you out of your game, don't let them take you off your focus, and don't let them get you discouraged. Because like I said earlier, them tables, they always turn, always. And if you're good, you know you're going to turn them sooner or later, hopefully sooner. The key is when you do, make it count. Don't lose confidence. Don't change what you do. If what you do has worked over time and you beat the game or you win enough to make it worthwhile and happy, don't change what you do. Don't let the run of bad luck or the bad trips or whatever's knocking you off um, or preventing you from cashing those tickets, take you out of your game. I didn't. I approached Sunday with the same vigor that I approached Saturday, even though Saturday I left with my tail between my legs and went, 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 went to go lick my wounds. Um, like I said, it takes one to turn it around, and if you stay focused, you can do it. If you don't let yourself get knocked off your game, you can do it. Easier said than done but very, very doable. And this weekend was a perfect example in the contrast between Saturday and Sunday. Now, the only difference being is, um, had Saturday been a good day, it would have been a monstrous weekend instead of just a monstrous day. But you take it as it comes, they're not all gonna be those major wins. But like I said, one horse like that can turn a lot, a lot, a lot of bad days around, uh, especially if you're a kill shot player the way that I am. So. Um, keep that in mind going forward. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back with more. Ciao for now.